Hi guys, this is Sadek from droidbin.com and in this video, we will show you how to install the latest Linux OS 20 ROM which is based on Android 13 on OnePlus 7, OnePlus 7 Pro, OnePlus 7T and OnePlus 7T Pro. So without any further delay, let's get started. First and foremost, please take a backup of all the data on your phone because the process will wipe off all the data. Likewise, make sure that you are on the latest Android 12 firmware. Let me show you once. So you can go and verify the same from the About Device section and make sure that you are on Android 12. If you have done both these requirements, then let's get started with the guide. So in this regard, your first course of action is to install the Android SDK platform tools folder. This is required. This is the official Google binaries and is required to boot your phone to the ADB and fastboot mode. So download it from the link given in the description and extract it on your PC. You could see the file something like this. This is the extracted platform tools folder as you could see. So extract it and then move over to the next step. This involves enabling USB debugging and OEM unlocking. So go to your phone's about device section and within that go to version then tap on build number 7 times. As soon as you do so you will get a message that you are now in developer mode. So go back, again go back, go to system settings, you should now see developer option. So go there and enable the toggle next to USB debugging as well as OEM unlocking. In my case it's already unlocked because my bootloader is already unlocked so it's grayed out. That's not an issue. So let's move ahead. Once that is done, your next course of action is to verify the ADB debugging prompt. So for that, let's first verify the ADB debugging connection. So go to the platform tools folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch a command prompt with the platform tools folder directory. Now type in ADB devices and make sure you get a serial ID. So as you could see, I'm getting a serial ID. This means that the connection is successful. If you're not getting any serial ID, then please disable the debugging and then re-enable it or tap on revoke USB debugging and retry the process. Likewise, use the official USB cable and you could try using the USB 2.0 port instead of the 3.0 port. So try out these USB tweaks and make sure you are getting the serial ID. If you are getting the serial ID, then you are good to proceed ahead. So next up, uh, we have to boot our phone to the fast boot mode. So for that, execute the following command ADB reboot bootloader. So type in this command and hit enter. This will boot your phone to the fast boot mode. Now while it's booting up, we will now have to unlock the bootloader. Do keep in mind that this will reset your device, remove all the data and could nullify the warranty as well. So if it's well and good on your end, then only proceed ahead. So all that you need to do is now type in fastboot OEM unlock and then hit enter. I have already unlocked my phone so I will not execute the command, I am just showing you the command. So type in fastboot OEM unlock and hit enter. You will now get a prompt on your phone. So use the volume keys to select unlock the bootloader and hit the power key to confirm it. If that command does not work, then you could also use the fastboot flashing unlock command as well. Both these commands will do the job. So type in fastboot flashing unlock and hit enter. You will get a prompt, select unlock the bootloader and then hit the power key to confirm it. Your device will undergo a reset and once the reset is complete, it will boot to the OS with the bootloader unlocked. Once it boot to the OS, make sure to re-enable the USB debugging and again boot to the fastboot mode. So once you are booted to the fastboot mode and make sure now it's showing the device status unlocked. As you could see in my case, it's showing unlocked. This signifies that the bootloader has been unlocked and we are now in fastboot mode. So let's now verify the fastboot connection as well. Just to be double sure, make sure to type in fastboot devices and verify that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any serial ID, then it means that the fastboot drivers are missing from your PC. So for that, please install the fastboot drivers. I have made a guide as well as a video on this topic. So you could refer to it and so that the drivers are installed successfully, please refer to this video and once the drivers are installed, you will then successfully get the serial ID on your command prompt window. Likewise, if you open the device manager from here, right click on windows icon, go to device manager. So make sure you, your device is showing as Android bootloader interface. Let me show you, your device should now show as Android bootloader interface. This signifies that the fastboot drivers have been installed and you are good to go ahead. So make sure to install the fastboot drivers and you are getting a serial ID. So it's well and good. Let's now move over to our next step, which involves downloading the ROM file recovery and G apps. G apps stands for Google Apps and is completely optional. Only install it if you want the Google Apps and services on your device. So download the files from these are for the OnePlus 70, 70 Pro, and from this guide you could download for the 7 and 7 Pro. All the links are given in the description. You can go and download it. Once you have downloaded the ROM file, make sure to transfer the ROM file to the platform tools folder on your PC. Likewise. Rename it to ROM so that the complete name becomes ROM.zip. We have renamed it because it becomes easier to type in the command prompt window. So download the ROM file. Likewise, download the recovery file as well. 
both the files are given in the link let me show you for reference if you click on this link then this is the rom file of around 900 mb this is the recovery file of around 96 mb so download both these files the rom is in a zip format and recovery is in the img format so download both this file and transfer them to the platform tools folder so re rename rom to rom and recovery file to simply recovery so that it become recovery.img apart from that if you want gfs as well then download gf from here transfer it to the platform tools folder and rename it to gapps so gapps will also be in a zip format so gapps and rom are in the zip format whereas recovery is in an img format so once you have downloaded all these three files and placed in the platform tools folder you could now proceed ahead out with our guide so our next course of action is to boot the phone to fast boot mode which we have done already now comes the most important part we now have to flash the recovery on our device now if you are owning a oneplus 7t or oneplus 7t pro then you have to flash the recovery in the recovery partition itself but if you are having OnePlus 7 and 7 Pro, then you will have to flash the recovery in the boot partition. I have taken this information from the official lineage, o lineage page as itself, so it's verified. For OnePlus 7 and 7 Pro, you have to flash the recovery in the boot partition. Whereas for 7T and 7T Pro, it's to be done in the recovery partition itself. So my phone is OnePlus 7T, so I will be flashing the recovery in the recovery partition itself. So just copy paste this command, or you could type in manually as well in the command prompt window. And then hit enter make sure that the name of the recovery is recovery.img as you can see from here and now hit enter the lineage os recovery will now be flashed and it will take a few seconds to be flashed so you could see the process is now complete we have flashed our recovery once the recovery is flashed you have to boot your phone to the recovery mode for that you could either use the fast boot reboot recovery command or let me show you one more method either use the command method or use the hardware key in hardware key you could use the volume down key to bring up the recovery option and then press the power button to select it or execute the you could also type in the fast boot reboot recovery command and then type in hit enter so as you could see our device is now booting to the recovery mode and the process would only take a few seconds to boot into the recovery mode so as you could see our device has booted to the lineage OS recovery and let me let so let's now move over to our next step just a minute yes so let's move over to our next step. Now we will have to first and foremost reset our device. This will remove all the data from your device. So make sure that you have taken a backup beforehand. So now let's reset the device. For that, go to factory reset and select format data factory reset. Again, select format data and wait for the process to finish. You could tr keep a track from the bottom of the device, bottom left. It's saying data wipe is complete. So if that's well and good, let's now move over to our next step. Once the format data is done, you will now have to install the ROM. So for that we'll be using the ADB side load mode. So go back and then select apply update. And within that select apply from ADB. Now our phone is in the side load mode. So now head over to the command prompt window and type in ADB side load. And the name of the ROM which is ROM.zip in our case. We re-verify the name of the ROM file is correct. So it's ROM.zip in our case. Now hit enter. The side loading will now begin. And the process will take a few minutes. It could take up to five to six minutes. It will first verify the update package. And once it has verified the signature, it will then begin the flashing process. So let's wait for the time frame. You could keep a track of the same from here as well from the command window. But do keep in mind that it usually tends to pause at 47%. This is not any issue, but it's just a UI bug you could call because the ROM will flash in the back end, but in the in the front end, the command prompt windows usually get stuck at 47%. So let's wait while the ROM is being flashed. So in the meantime, let's discuss some other topics related to this ROM flashing. Let me first show you the 47% bug so that you don't worry about this thing. So as you could see, it will now start and stop at 47%. Actually, the ROM is flashing, and you could see on our device it has started the first step of the two-step of flashing ROM. But over here, you would only get 47%. So regarding this, I would also like to say one more thing. When the flashing is complete, you will get the total X4 1 into message. However, that is not the only message. In some cases, you might also see a message is something along the following lines, such as ADB failed to read command, ADB failed to read command, no error, then 47% ADB or ADB failed to read command. All these error messages signify that the ROM has been flashed successfully. Yes, it might sound a little bit counterintuitive, but trust me, all these messages mean the same thing. So if you get any of these five messages, then it means that the ROM flashing has been successful and you could proceed ahead. So let's now verify the process. In the command form, it will show only 
and in our phone it's currently stuck at step one or two so the process usually takes around 10 minutes while that is flashing i have also made a recently made a guide as well as a video on how could you could root this rom as well so once you are done installing this rom and if you want to root it then do check out our guide i have rooted the rom which is based on linux os 20 android 13 itself so you could carry out this task there are two methods of rooting this rom you could either simply sideload the magisk app after renaming it to magisk zip or you could also extract the payload.bin file and then flash it via that method so if you are done using the flashing the rom you could also try out this task of installing the magis and rooting your rom first try the first method and if that does not work then you could try the second method i have also made a video on that so you could also re-verify this method if you want so let me again show you the method as of now on the device it's step two of two has started so and as you could see install completed with status zero this signifies that the flashing is now complete let me show you the command window as well just a minute so as you could see it's showing total extra one which signifies that the flashing is now complete and we are good to proceed ahead so once the flashing is done let's move over to our next step just a minute so with this we have installed the rom and now let's move over if you want to install gf as well then move over to our next step however if you do not want to install gfs then you could not type on reboot system now and your phone will boot to the lineage os rom without any google app however let's now flash the gfs it is completely optional it's completely up to you so in this process i will be flashing the gfs so for that you will have to re restart your phone to the recovery mode so go to advanced and select reboot to recovery your device will again reboot to the pixel experience sorry to the lineage os recovery and the process will take us only a few seconds to boot so let's wait for the time frame as you could see a device has rebooted to the pixel to the lineage os recovery and now we are good to proceed ahead so first and foremost make sure you have the gf file in the platform tools folder if that's well and good then go to apply update and select apply from adb but this our phone is now in the adb sideload mode and we could now sideload the gfs so go to the command prompt window and just type in adb sideload space followed by the name of the gf package in our case it's gf.zip so now hit enter and the flashing will now begin and it will only take a couple of minutes for the time being it's now verifying the update package so let's wait for the time frame and you might again see at 47 percent you might get a prompt on your phone so as you could see you are getting a signature verification failed so why is this happening but if you flash any file using lineage os recovery that is not a part of lineage os family you will get this prompt for example if you flash any g apps if you flash magisk or any zip file for that matter which is not a part of lineage os then you will get this verification failed so that's not a cause of concern just tap on yes it will now proceed with the installation it will now install the gf package so if you are flashing any file in the near future as well for example any zip file or mod file you will get that message you could just tap on install anyway that is if you if you are sure of the trustworthiness of that file in our case we are sure of the source that is a g app and it's the trusted file so we tap on install anyway so as you could see the process is now complete and we are getting install completed with status zero on the command prompt as, is as well we are getting total x4 into one into this signifies that the gfs have now been installed so once that is done you could now access the os so before that i would recommend you to factory reset your phone once again it's not although it's not compulsory but i would highly recommend you to do so so go to factory reset then select fa format data and again select format data it's just to be a double show that there is no encryption left on our phone so with that done you could not type on reboot system now so your device will now reboot to the newly installed linux os 20 rom which is based on android 13 and do keep in mind that the first boot will take up some time because it is beginning from the scratch so the boot up time could be anywhere around two three minutes so while it is booting up just to recall while flashing the linux there is only one single difference between the linux os rom on oneplus 7 and 7 pro and oneplus 70 and 70 pro on oneplus 7 and 7 pro you have to flash the Linux OS recovery in the boot partition using pathboot flash boot recovery.img which is the name of the recovery file whereas on the oneplus 70 and 70 pro you have to flash the recovery file in the recovery partition itself so make sure to keep in mind this difference apart from that the entire instructions are completely same there is no other change so always yes so always keep this in mind and while flashing or sideloading any file if you get any of these 
error message yes that's not a cause of concern because it also signifies that the flashing is completed successfully so in the meantime you could see this is the lineage os boot animation it's booting up now and as told you before the first boot up usually takes up to a few extra seconds this is only for the first time boot up for the subsequent restart your device will not take that much time so do not worry if it's taking some long time wait as you could see a device has now booted to lineage os recovery this is a usb debugging prompt you could Type on allow if you want, then select start. And currently, I'm skipping all the setup because I want to show you the ROM itself. So let's skip th this processes. I am getting the Google services screen because I have installed GApps. If you have not installed GApps, you will not get the screen. So let's accept the terms and condition and skip the password for now. Now type on next, gesture navigation, and skip start. So as you could see, our phone has now booted into Lineage OS 20 ROM, which is based on Android 13. Let me show you the status. This is the navigation settings menu. Let me go to there. And if I go to the system, then updater, you could see I'm on the Lineage OS 20 ROM, which is based on Android 13. And my phone is, as you could see, it's OnePlus 70. So guys, this was all from this video on how you could install the latest Lineage OS 20 on OnePlus 7, OnePlus 7 Pro, OnePlus 70, and OnePlus 70 Pro. If you have any queries, do let me know in the comment section and please subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching.